Alright, what is up? So I felt like talking about Kingdoms of Amalur, I don't know why, uh, today earlier I was just thinking about older games I played and I loved, and I can't remember what brought this into my head, but there's something about Kingdoms of Amalur that I will, I'll never forget this, it's one of my favorite games ever made, uh, and I don't want to overhype it because, you know, too much hype ruins an experience, you know, but I had to share, I had to add this to my, um, my, my playlist of don't forget to play. So it's one of the games that I remember being one of the most beautiful games I've ever played as well. Uh, gorgeous. And of course now it would be dated and it wouldn't look as good, but there's still some of the environments, like even now I would still be really impressed by, not all of them, but some of them, at least like half the game probably. Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting, I was trying to find some gameplay videos to put in the background here while I talk about it. And a lot of the environments in these videos and, and on YouTube and stuff don't really show like the really spectacular scenes because I was watching them. I'm like, man, what? Ha where's all the good stuff at? You know, because there is there. Uh, but there is also the normal stuff, the normal landscapes, the normal environments and stuff like that. But the game in places is just stunning. Um, but also one of the things that I, I remember is the story. I don't remember the overall story. Like it's huge. It's long. The game, if you want a deep RPG, it's deep. The one thing that I'll never forget about this, I think it, I know it took me at least two tries to get into it. It might have taken me three times um, to go back, trying to go back and play it. Because the first time I played it, I started it up and I was like, eh, I don't really want to play this. Uh, it's just like every other game I played, that kind of a thing. And especially the opening storyline story, it did not draw me in because the story was so generic in the very beginning. The very beginning of the story, the way you start your character, was pretty generic to me. I was like, eh, I've seen this a bunch. I don't really care. Um, but so eventually I got back to it. I kept wanting to try it and I can't remember what, what, what got me wanting to try it, but I kept, I went back a couple of times, at least once, if not twice after my first attempt. And then after the, what I remember is either the first 30 minutes or the first 60 minutes. And I, I, cause timing is, is a little off for me and stuff, but I, I know at least probably after the first hour of the game is when it opens up and becomes this incredible journey that's just long and huge and so much to experience uh, but the very opening part of it is, is pretty normal it's stuff that you've probably seen before you played and it's, you know nothing super special or anything it doesn't mean it's bad it's just nothing that's really gonna grab you and hold you right you know um, but for whatever reason I must have when I did go back to try it, I must have just been in the mood to push through because I did and once 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 that it kind of felt like getting past the tutorial you know and there's lots of games that have 20 hour long tutorials like Persona 5 or Red Dead Redemption and stuff it's freaking ridiculous but um, once you get past that stuff that opening stuff that's still trying to teach you the game it's like it just opens up and then all of a sudden it's like wow and so for Kingdoms of Amalur it's very much like that uh, and it's the fr I, I think it's like the first hour that you know you, you kind of have it's not a tutorial tutorial right it's not like teaching you all the stuff for that long but it's so so generic in the beginning that it you know it took a while to get into what it really becomes and just wow so it, it is kind of an open world game but it's very linear or linear I never remember how to pronounce that word but it's uh, so there's uh, there is openness to it, but there's also a lot of paths that you can just go down this path, down this path, and stuff like that. But there is an openness to it. It is generally it's an open world, uh, just a lot, a little bit more limited, which is kind of cool because I like direction. And it's not one of those open world games where it's just oh, do this, 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 and this just covered with stupid crap like the current Assassin's Creed games. You know, it's not like that. It is an RPG game. It's really cool. I will, if I were to compare it to another game, it would be like the Witcher games. Um, but I personally, I think this is better. And one of the reasons that I personally prefer Kingdom of Amalur is because when it comes to dialogue, um, there, it's always direct and to the point when it comes to the main objectives, whether it's a side mission or the a big campaign mission. It's to the point you can it's, it's got those dialogue options you know if you want to know more about the character if you want to know more about the environments you can click on that and ask about it otherwise you skip all that stuff if you want to just get to the story and stick to the point and that is something that I really enjoy it's one thing that drives me nuts about a lot of other games where they just has all this pointless dialogue that I don't care about in the moment like I don't mind knowing about the characters but it's not interesting it doesn't keep me wanting to play the game it doesn't keep the story going it's just random nonsense that I don't care about uh, most of the time. Sometimes though, like like in Kingdoms of Amalur, there were 
plenty of hours. I mean, I have lots of hours played on that game. And there were times where I would stop and be like, you know what? Now I'm in the mood to know about these characters and the environment and, and the lore, extra lore that I'm not getting from, from skipping this dialogue. I, you know, there are times like that when it's a choice. So I like that. Uh, it's voice acted. It's uh, The combat is fun. It's an action RPG kind of hack and slashy. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. And it's... It is one of my most favorite games. I, I think about it all the time. I don't remember the whole story of how I how the whole team went bankrupt and everything. It really sucks because the game was really freaking good. Really good! Like, holy crap, I cannot believe that. And there are people out there that trash on it. They didn't like it. Um, you know, but there are also people like me that absolutely loved it. Uh, one of my favorite things about the side quests and stuff, uh, besides the getting to the point and also allowing you to get extra dialogue, for the story was the stories I thought were interesting uh, the stories themselves it was different stories different characters and the missions themselves of course your same old either fetch fetch quests or go kill something that gives us so the missions themselves the actual combat and stuff like that your mission is kind of the same as most games right you know you go kill something you pick up a flower whatever stuff like that but the story was what was interesting to me I liked I liked the reason I was doing those things you know uh, so that's pretty cool. So this is just definitely a game that I recommend if you ever see it on sale or even if you feel like picking up an RPG that's really good. It is old now, but it's if you never played it, it's worth trying. And you, and you might, uh, hopefully, if, if you're like me and you didn't like the beginning of the game and your kid doesn't suck you in right away, try to push through because it does get really good. <laughs> uh, and it's pretty cool. It's totally worth playing. So don't forget to play Kingdoms of Amulet Reckoning. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.